Welcome back. So this is module seven uh, and video five uh, in our Ansible 101 workshop series of videos. And so this covers some best practices that we like to uh, include um, as far as taking folks that maybe haven't worked with Ansible previously and really giving them a sense of what it takes to, to make it work in the real world. So three main uh, areas that we want to cover here. Number one, um, best practice that we can offer, you know, we we have to be able to protect our secrets in order to actually work with infrastructure automation, right? We can't have plain text passwords flying around in uh, in either unencrypted uh, transports or uh, you know sitting there plain text on files and so forth. And so, uh, especially when we start in including version control, which we highly recommend that you do anytime that you're working with Ansible, uh, is to version control that, uh, similar to what we're doing here with GitHub being able to actually encrypt any passwords that do need to be included for whatever reasons uh, and or not not even in, uh, encrypt or include them at all as far as the playbooks and being able to actually inject those in at runtime, uh, very powerful. Um, you should study a little bit as you, you know, start working with Ansible on your own a little bit about how verbosity works and that uh, the more verbosity that you give to Ansible playbooks, uh, the more likely it is that your secrets could end up leaking into things like log files or you know, obviously standard out. Um, but you know, in most cases, um, you know, when we're working with uh, remote hosts, we can actually you know, pretty trivially protect secrets. And so we'll walk through that here. So we'll take um, a basic example. Um, we're gonna go back out to our home directory and we'll go ahead and create a, a, a file here. Um, so we're in module seven, I'll just take it from here. Basically, what we're going to do is is actually introduce how we want to uh, include something here. So we'll do really, really basic stuff. Nothing I would ever um, suggest you make your actual password. Um, go ahead and do this. And as long as we remember what the password is, we're probably okay. Um, so we'll go ahead and, in general, you'll want to. Um, uh, you know, create some type of uh, a password file that actually uh, that locally will uh, allow you to decrypt at runtime uh, the things that you're encrypting. That way, you're not constantly entering your password over and over again. So that's sort of the concept here. So we create the creds file. Now we're going to go ahead and create another extremely insecure uh, password um, that that we'll use to just uh, encrypt and, and decrypt the uh, the creds file that we're working with. And so now we're going to go ahead and use the Ansible vault command. And so that's another uh, very helpful command. The sub command here is encrypt. That creds file that we just updated previously where we created something like a username and something like a password. Going to encrypt that file. It wants to know what the password is. So here we are including the password that we just added to that text file. It says that we're uh, successful in encrypting that. So now when we look at the creds file, we see that it's actually encrypted, right? So now what we should be able to do is take um, uh, and, and actually create a, a demo here. And let's step back up and encryption demo. And so here we are basically starting to introduce a few different ideas. So I'll go ahead and put this in just to get started. Let's talk about this. So we're introducing a couple of concepts. So one is that we're working with local hosts really for the first time, uh, as far as a host that we've defined. Uh, and the next is that we're turning off fact gathering. Um, that's important. Um, and then we are actually calling out this virus file. The credentials file actually has our username and our password. So you know we're calling these this out uh, to this file, and we're basically saying this the user that we defined previously in the password here. We're also introducing the concept of piping. So this is actually creating a method um, in, in this case, the Linux, the rel based uh, uh, Linux system that we're working with won't accept a plain text password to be injected through uh, automation like this. So we actually have to hash it basically twice uh, for the purposes of this workshop demo. Um, so we've done that now, uh, we've created that. And so what we should be able to do is run the slightly longer command than some of the commands that we've run previously, but just to try to you know look at it once again, looking at localhost using a local connection method as opposed to SSH, uh, running against that YAML file and then pointing at the password file that we created up here, right? Just as a convenience for ourselves. So I believe that I pasted that into my clipboard and certainly did. 
So from here, we should uh, see that we did actually go ahead and create that user. And so what we should be able to do is basically, um, uh, and in this case, we actually did run it locally. So what we should be able to do now is actually uh, SU um, into, into that. And we are actually now running as that other user account. So that, you know, right here, uh, we've just created that. So we'll go ahead and back that out. So that is, um, that's a look at, at uh, Ansible Vault. The second thing is more of, um, you know, a, a best practice just around, you know, once again, like our, our overall approach to how we're automating. Um, we should sometimes want to look before we leap into making changes. I would certainly recommend that before you start doing anything that, that requires privilege escalation, that you strongly consider um, actually running check mode. And if we use the check and the diff flags together, in the Sansible playbook, um, we should uh, actually know what would change without it actually uh, making the change to the system. And so, for instance, if we were going to use that remove Apache playbook that we ran previously, we would uh, we would be able to see how it would uh, affect the systems in question, right? So, just pointing at our inventory, um, uh, just at host one of that, it tells us that it would actually. Uh, remove Apache and it would actually make Apache absent. Now it, it shows this in terms of the color coding as though it did make the change, um, but it, anything that, it, that supports check mode generally will support this kind of behavior where you can actually, you know, really take a look before you start running things at either tens or hundreds or let alone thousands of systems that you would be making changes to, you're actually able to see using a dry run uh, what would happen um, before you actually make that change. And the final best practice to cover Ansible Lint in a little bit more detail, we did uh, look at it in a previous video and we have an expanded version of uh, a coverage of that in a, in a previous video that we did earlier this year. But let's just try to look at this a, a little bit more. We're gonna go ahead and create uh, something that'll, that'll let us have a sense of what um, a custom rule set might look like in working, um, in working with, uh, with Ansible Lint in that way. So, when we think about organizationally, there's almost always, you know, a set of practices that are uh, that deviate somewhat from the standard. And so, you know, here we're just, you know, doing a very generic uh, playbook. This could be doing anything. It's just doing a Fibonacci sequence, just to, you know, have some something to do. Um, but in general, what we're trying to do is basically, you know, figure out whatever the syntactic sugar is that our organization thinks of as being like, you know, general, you know, code standards or whatever. And so we're going to uh, we're going to look at that here. And we'll Ansible Lint, first, first of all, we'll Ansible Lint uh, this by default. And we'll see what, as we've talked about previously, what the community thinks we should be doing here. And so in general, um, it's uh, Ansible Lint by default when we point out that new playbook. It tells us that all tasks should be named, and I would agree with that. Uh, and, and it gives us the same kind of helpful output if we didn't want to uh, silence that or do anything else with it. But in the next case, what we can do is start uh, introducing, you know, again, our own idea of, of what should be considered standard. So um, Ansible Lint custom rules are looking uh, to, you know, uh, be placed into this type of a, a Python file with this name. That's just what it's, what it's searching for when we run Ansible Lint. And so we'll look at this in this basic uh, construct here, but you know, the, the general approach, let me go and load this in and we'll talk about it a little bit more before we actually run the example. The general approach is here. Uh, we are actually creating our own uh, ID, our own short description, our own description to look for uh, something that is actually, um, you know, looking to see, are we actually gathering facts and we're at scale gathering facts. If you've got a lot of systems, it can, it can take up a lot of the runtime of an Ansible playbook run. So we don't always need to run it. So we're taking a very extreme approach to this, just to try to generate an example. The idea here is that we can include things like gathering facts um, in a playbook, and then we can basically, um, you know, have a custom rule set that, that recommends that we don't run it if we don't need to. So a new person who joins the team, she may not know all of the do's and don'ts or, you know, generally what we think of as being the quote unquote right way to approach our environment. But if we use custom rules like this with Ansible Lint, we're getting her into a place where she's getting up to speed much faster. And once again, we can let her make decisions. Uh, is this, uh, do I still want to run with uh, this code line or, you know, whatever the, 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 the change is 
uh, or the deviation from standard, but you know that's more of a discussion point that's automatically created if we if we are linting by default, we're using custom rule sets, uh, customized rule sets, and we're in a place where we can do a lot there to do a, you know get people onboarding very very fast. So and uh, just to demonstrate what that looks like, um, we'll go ahead and run that here. So the minus R flag. Um, basically points at the directory structure that we want and here uh, is our custom rule um, that you know showing that the facts uh, shouldn't be gathered in, in this specific case. Uh, a few other things to just note um, as we wrap this up um, also worth uh, mentioning working with rolling updates um, you know anybody that wants to go fast without breaking a bunch of stuff at all at the same time you got multiple apps, app stacks and you're orchestrating or you know other things that you're trying to do where maybe you've got 10 systems and a load balancer or 50, whatever it is, you only want to do half of them or you know some fraction of them at a time. Rolling updates can help you with that in ways that simple Ansible forking, if you're familiar with that construct, won't. Um, Ansible pull is also good uh, by default, as we've talked about, Ansible is push-based, but Ansible pull can help you invert that and be a little bit more like Chef or Puppet uh, if, if you would choose to. And then um, becoming more test-driven in general, Ansible is nice because it's declarative, but we can actually take that a step further as far as working with things like Test Kitchen or Molecule um, to be a little bit more test-driven on that. So that, that covers the best practices for our Ansible 101 workshop. Thank you so much.